Francis. Well, good morning, ladies. Welcome to another Wow Thursday Fellowship. As always, we'd like to invite and welcome our facilitators to the side of the stage for our weekly prayer huddle. Again, we'd like to invite all of our facilitators, even co-facilitators, to come to the side of the stage for our weekly prayer huddle. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Let us all stand and sing praises to the God who is our rock, to the center of our focus, Jesus. The Bible says that he can turn your mourning into dancing as you praise him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Put our hands together. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's give our best clap offering to the Lord. Continue to be in a heart posture of praise. If you are feeling weary, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling thirsty for the living water, let's lay it all down right here, right now at his feet. Let's sing it out, ladies. Here we go.
for the wonders of his love. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Because we know that no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, no matter what our background is, no matter what family we come from, Lord, there's no shame, there's no guilt in you, God. And we can just lay it all at your feet and we praise you, Lord, for that. Thank you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, sisters. Wow. What an amazing start of our day, our worship, our fellowship. It was Gosh, Jaira, I was so um, amazed at uh, Shoban's voice. Yeah. Did you hear oh. that? It's so angelic. <laughs> no, it matches her face. Angelic oh, yes. voice, angelic face. Always. But anyway, I was just, you know, just so carried away. But good morning, well, ladies. How are you all today? Do you agree? It was such a wonderful reminder. Uh, of God's love for us, that God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son to save us, right? So yes, how, are, how are you all doing? Kumusta? <laughs> are you all doing great? Yes, Sis Hazel, it's such a beautiful morning today. It's so nice to have you back again here, beautiful ladies. My name is Jessica O'Hara, your co-host for this morning. I forgot to yeah. introduce myself. My oh. gosh. Oh, yeah. My name is Hazel. <laughs> this is my sister Hazel. Zaragoza. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, we would just like to welcome all of you to our weekly WOW Fellowship. And you know what is Hazel? It's amazing that there are hundreds of ladies attending just here at the CCF Center. Yes. Do you know that? Yeah. And even online. Many ladies are joining us online via our Facebook and YouTube uh, live streams, yeah. right? Yeah, so let's say hi to them. Hi, hi. to all those <laughs> viewers on YouTube and um, Facebook live, live right? stream. Yes. So we are who live streaming among right you now. here are first-timers? Can we, we see have a... Some hands. Do we have first timers? first timers here this morning, ladies. Oh, wow, have, she's coming. There's a first timer coming to table 15, 15, I think. Yeah, welcome. So, welcome, ladies. Oh, there's another one there. A I table. can't see where. Uh, what table is that? <laughs> so, 30, far 24. Back. Yeah. welcome, ladies. So, we'd like we, to acknowledge the first timers. Thank you yes. for coming. And it's not an accident that you're here today, right? Amen. So, it is really, um, God's plan. I mean, you oh, know. Yes. It's, so yes. it's such a blessing to be here. I mean, to see all of you ladies here, yes. right? We are so, so thrilled to have you here with us today. Okay. So true. So, Jessica, are you excited for the topic for today? Because you know what? Um, personally, I was really excited when I heard about it. Oh, I'm so excited about it. as well. <laughs> so, what is our topic for today? It's actually the ultimate purpose. Of God for I'm sorry the ultimate purpose for God in your life I think it's the yeah the ultimate purpose of God for your life okay so who have actually asked that question before I know I have 
I'm sure all of us have, right? Mm. So, yeah. do you want to know what God's purpose is for you? I want to know. How about you, Sister <laughs> Jessica? Of course, I want to know. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, well, today is the day. Today is the day that, that the, the Lord, Lord has, has made. <laughs> but we shall rejoice and be, and be glad, glad in it. it. But apart from that, you will probably find out what God has planned for you, right? Oh, yes. So let's not just merely survive in this life, but thrive, thrive. right? You know the meaning of thrive? Yeah, I do. Well, I look at it, I mean, it really means <laughs> to overcome, yes. to succeed and win. Yes. Ladies, do you want to be all winners? Of for course. the Lord. Yes. <laughs> of course. We Woo. want to be victorious because we are already victorious with Jesus, Amen. right? Amen. And now to introduce our speaker for today, I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I love her. If uh, some of you are not yet familiar with her, <laughs> she Go graduated ahead. magna cum laude with a degree of mass communications from St. Paul College of Manila. She has a master's degree in film from the University of Illinois. She used to be the president of a company that produced TV and film commercials. She's an actress, a director, motivational speaker, and a health and wellness advocate. Do you know that she was my first gym instructor? Really? At the I didn't know gym that. On the seventh floor. Wow. Years before. Amazing. And it, we had so much fun, actually. <laughs> we homeschooled our daughters together. And uh, her son, actually, is Gino, a Christian risk management officer, and Joanna, a Christian architect. She is married to Pastor Joey Geronimo from CCF Beyond. And, but most of all, she is surrendered, a surrendered follower of Jesus Christ. Let's welcome Ms. Jean Geronimo. <clears throat> Good morning. It's nice to see you again this year. This is the second time. And as you know, when I talk, what do I do? It's very interactive. I ask a question and you answer. And if you will not be able to answer, it's okay. You're still pretty, sexy, and beautiful. Yes? All right. Why do I do this? So that I will know that you are listening to me. You are not sleeping. Kasi kung matutulog lang kayo sana, natulog na lang kayo sa bahay, gaganda pa yung balat nyo. Okay. All right. We will start. What is the ultimate purpose of God for your life? Let us read. All together now. With projection, conviction, and diction. Natutunan nyo yan last time. All together now. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. First question, verse 17. In verse 17, where's Jaira? Jaira, can I ask you a question? Are you listening? <laughs> in verse 17, what are being compared? In verse 17, can you give a mic to Jaira? Every good tree bears good fruit, and but a bad tree bears bad fruit. What are being compared? Very good. Magna cum laude. You can take your seat. <laughs> Very good. A bad fruit and a good fruit. Let's continue. What fruits are being manifested in your life? Let's read again with conviction and diction and projection. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Read with me, please. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons, nagpapalayas ng demonyo, and in your name, perform many miracles, nagihiling. 
Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. Ellen Muna, Ellen, where are you? Who is speaking here? Jesus, very good. Wag kang umupo. Meron pang follow-up question. <laughs> okay. What are the fruits that are being talked about here? And they are highlighted. Very good. Thank you. You can take your seat. The one who clapped. Okay. The one who clapped. The one in orange. Go to the mic, please. Saan ba tayo nagpo-prophesy? Prophesying here doesn't mean foretelling the future. It is teaching. In the context of CCF, where do we teach anyone? They group very good who said that. Yeah. Palayas. Deliverance ministry perform many miracles. Saan yon? Huh? Healing. Sa hospital, the healing ministry. So those things, prophesying, driving out demons, performing many miracles, they are representative of ministry. Lahat ministry. Ano pang ibang ministry in CCF? Glorious Hope. Welcome, Center Host Team. They're Ministry. Now, very good, o di ba? Sabi ni Jesus, Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. Ah, Pre-present nila to enter heaven are ministries. Pero ang sabi ni Jesus, Away from me, you evildoer. Jessica, the MC, where is Jessica? Can you go to the mic? <laughs> Ang natatawag ko siyempre yung nakikita ko sa harap. Okay, Jessica. Sabi ni Jesus, away from me, you evildoer. The clue here is evildoer. Ang tinitig... Wow, very good. Suma kum laude. Yan ba yung D group mo? Na disciple ng tama. Tapos na ang aking talk. <laughs> All right. Evil doers. So, Jesus looks at the heart. Sabi ni Edmund Chan, I don't know if you have remember, if you re can remember this. The title of the conference is In His Presence. He said, Mandate. Before mission, being versus doing, being before doing. What does that mean? It can be illustrated by the character of Mary and Martha. Mary has chosen the better part and it cannot be taken from her. Aligaga si Martha sa do the work. But Mary is staying at the foot of the cross. Therefore, what are we saying? Jesus looks at the heart. Your intimate, personal relationship with God. Ministry is an overflow of that intimacy with God. Naintindihan po ba? Wag karirin ang ministry. Ang karirin ay intimacy. And before you know it, ginagamit ka na ng Panginoon kahit ayaw mo pang magpagamit because it overflows from the heart. Malinaw po ba? Let us summarize. What fruits will people present? We prophesied in your name. Nag-lead ako ng D-group, Lord. Ayaw mo kong papasukin. Drive out demons in your name. We, I was a member of the deliverance ministry. And then the other person said, I performed many miracles in your name. We prayed for the sick. We did many ministries. Gusto niyo pa mag-enumerate pa ako, Lord? 
Ay sabi ni Jesus, away from me, you evildoers. That is the summary. Intro lang po yan. Hindi po yan ang meat ng message. This is <laughs> intro lang. The title, Ultimate Purpose of God for Your Life. Be Christ-like. Amen. Hallelujah. All together now, let's read. Please read me, with me. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image. Come on, in our likeness. So, sin nag-uusap? Si God the Father, kinakausap niya ang two other persons of the Trinity, Jesus and Holy Spirit, kaya our, tatlo sila. Okay? So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. So in the beginning... God created men to be loving and holy like Him. But, but because of sin, we became... What, first, what is the meaning of holy? Give me one meaning. Holy. Lagi yung naririnig. Perfect. Set apart. Different. Not common. Different. Kakaiba. Kakaiba siya. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng holy. So, He created man to be holy. But because of sin, what happened? Man became not loving. Christians do not forgive. Christians became like everybody else. Christians, we do not, we love things more than people. Christ is a sermon. But we, we, instead of being a servant, we became entitled. Example, example, you are not here, you reserved a table, and then you came in late, and then you got angry with the person who reserved that table. So what is that entitlement? Okay, yun ang nangyari because of sin. And originally, the purpose of God is to make us Christ-like. But because of sin, it was marred. Nadungisan, marred. Okay? But because of God's goodness and grace and unconditional love, He is going to accomplish that purpose for your life and my life, including that lady who, did, who reserved that table. Okay? And when will that happen? All together now, dear friends, let's read. Why do I ask you to read? Because if you read, it is reinforcing the understanding of the passage compared to you reading, just reading with your eyes. So if your mouth is also reading, it reinforces. Pinapatatag ang pagkakaintindi, hindi lang ng utak, kundi ng puso. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. Let's read. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. May I call Joy Longkop on the mic, please. When is this? When Christ appears. Or you can shout it out. When? When will that happen? What? Second coming, very good, magna cum laude. Yung mga nasa harap talagang umupo dito. <laughs> okay. The second coming, when Christ appears, we shall be like Him. Hallelujah. It, 
doesn't mean that we will become omnipotent, all-powerful, just like God. It doesn't mean that we will become omniscient, all-knowing like God. But we will be like Him in character and in appearance. Okay? Hindi ka na po magiging perfectly controlling. You will be perfectly humble. Hindi ka na po perfectly makulit. You will, or nagger, you will be perfectly meek and gentle. Hindi ka na po laging titingin sa Prada, Biton, Chanel. <laughs> Dahil hindi mo na kailangan ang Biton at Chanel during that time. Hallelujah. And you will be perfect in appearance. Kung ngayon, ikaw ay 36? 36? <laughs> and 36. <laughs> At that time, when Christ appears, it will be 36, 22, 36. <laughs> Hallelujah. Perfect in character, in appearance. However, now, what is God doing in your life now? He is in the process of making you Christ-like up to the time you die or in the second coming, whichever comes first. Ikaw, ano kaya ang gusto mo? Tanungin mo ko, when will Christ come? Tanungin mo ko. I don't know. <laughs> Basta alam ko, dadating siya. And I'm always praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Okay, malapit na. Let's see, what is God doing right now in your life? All together now, Romans 8, 28 to 29. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Okay, it says here, all things work together for good. L My dear, what is your name? Josephine. Pag ikaw ba ay pinamanahan ng isang magandang bahay, you inherited a big mansion. Is that good? Good. Very good. Not just good. Good. Very good. Ay nasunog yung mansion. Is that good? Eh sabi all things eh. All, it may be bad at that particular point in time, but it says all things. So, those things which are seemingly bad at that time na nasunog ang bahay is included in the all things. And it will work together for your good. And that good can be found in verse 29. Yes, my dear, what is your name? And what is that good in reference to verse 29? And it's highlighted. Yes, the purpose is for you to be Christ-like. I will give an example. During the Sunday worship, do you remember the name of the person who gave the testimony? He's a, she's a full-time staff. She, her name is Nikki Perez. She worked full-time. Uh, she worked in, uh, in the industry, I think, the design industry. And she graduated magna cum laude. And she became very successful. I think she became a part owner of that company. She was offered shares in the company. But then, she, God called her to full-time ministry in CCF. To make the long story short, at this very moment, she has cancer. Is that bad? It is bad, seemingly bad, but it will work together for her good. And what is that good? Christ-likeness. Now, Nikki is so, so intimate with Jesus. She is so dependent on Jesus, and she is gentle. And she has so much joy and peace. Are you following? Yes. yes. Now, what should be our attitude then if we encounter trials? Anyone? Be joyful. Where do you find that? I will just give you the verse. James 1, 2 to 4. 
Count it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter trials of various kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. I will also give an example which uh, Pastor Peter also gave the example. It's Sister Diona. When Sister Diona in encounters a very inconvenient situation or challenging situation, she will say, correct, I'm so excited. Because God will do something. That is the meaning of count it all joy. Count it all joy when you encounter various trials of many kind. Okay. Now, trials are used by God to make us Christ-like. The ultimate purpose of God for our life is not to be rich or to have so many houses or to have many, so many Pradas, Bitton, Chanel, na binili naman sa Green Hills. <laughs> okay. That is not the purpose. The ultimate purpose of God is for us to be Christ-like. Okay. Now, for us, for you, to better understand this concept of ultimate purpose of God for your life, let us use a chart. I want you to appreciate the PowerPoint. Pastor Joey made the PowerPoint. <laughs> Delivery lang po ako. Okay. No. Okay, three stages of salvation. This is a typical timeline. There is birth and there is death. All of us was born at a certain period of time. Unless puto ka sa buho. Puto ka ba sa buho? So, you were born at a particular time, and all of us will die sooner or later. Okay? Ang tawag doon is the typical timeline. Okay. However, there is the, this first stage of salvation wherein you believe that Christ died for all your sins, past, present, and future sins. You surrender your life to God, and you know and believe in your heart that you will go to heaven, not through your own merit, but through God only. That is called the second birth. It is commonly known as the born-again experience. Another term for it is... Very good. It's on the screen. Justification. What is justification? You were saved from the penalty of sin. You are declared not guilty. Okay? There is the, this particular point in time na ginawa mo yan. That, that's why it's represented by a dot. Do you see the red dot? It's called your conversion experience. That happened to me on March 13, 1983, in the confines of my bedroom. No nuns, no priests, no deacons, no elders, no pastors, just me and my God. I said, Lord, if you are real, I want you to come into my heart. I really felt the overshadowing presence of the Holy Spirit embracing me. And I said, Lord, I'm relinquishing control of my life. Please come in and fellowship with me. However, I have two conditions. Lord, but I will not do two things. Number one, I will not become a missionary. I became a missionary. Number two, I will not marry a pastor. I am now a pastor's wife. So, so I learned that I should not make conditions. You just surrender your life to God and enjoy it to the hilt. Now, let me ask you, raise your hand. Do you remember that day, your spiritual birthday? Raise your hand. Your spiritual birthday. Raise your hand. Raise, raise. Very good. Now put it down. But the rest of you, since you can't remember that, but do you remember that specific moment in your life when you surrendered your life to Jesus and you believe that you cannot go to heaven apart from the saving power of the cross. But for the rest of you, maybe some of you, you cannot remember that specific moment in your life. But yet, you go to CCF. You attend worship services in CCF. Even you, Maybe you attend WOW or you attend a D group, but you cannot remember. Maybe there is a possibility that what you have is religion. 
Now, at this point, I will ask you a question. Get a partner. Partner, maybe you did this before, but I will do it again. Okay, ask your partner this question. If you are, not now, you just listen to me. If you are to rate your spiritual life, that is the question. Promise in a scale, on a scale of 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ask your partner. If you say your answer, your grade is 1, you are telling me that you, when you die today, not tomorrow, today, you are sure you are going to hell. That's 1. If your partner is, your, their partner's answer is 10, that means you are sure, 100% sure, that if you die now, you are going to heaven when you die. What is your grade? Share it to your partner, to your partner. Okay, very good. Nagchikahan na sila. I love it. Basta babae, nagchichikahan. Isa lang ang taho, tanong, nagchikahan na. Okay. <laughs> now, this is the next question. Raise your hand if the answer of your partner, not your answer, the answer of your partner is from one to five. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if the answer of your partner is six or seven. Answer of your partner. One, two. Go ahead. Raise your hand. I have to see it. Answer of your partner. One, two. Raise your hand if the answer of your partner is eight or nine. One, two, one, two, two three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, eight, okay, eight, yung kanina, two, okay, now, if the answer of your partner is ten, perfect ten, raise your hand, hallelujah, majority is ten, I know, this is so hard, I did this, uh, as you know, my passion, aside from, from uh, sharing the gospel and motivating people, encouraging people, is be living a healthy lifestyle. I want to be fit and healthy. Therefore, before the pandemic, I used to go to the gym at least three times a week. And there's this guy. I always see him there. Talagang pushing, right? Lifting. Masel, masel. Batak na batak yan. <laughs> and then, but he's like this. It's always like this. Of course, you can do like that if you are uh, lifting weights. But after lifting weights, the endorphin is released, so you should be happy. Correct? So, he, he came up to me one time. Joey, Jeronimo po. Ah, kayo nga po. Ah, okay. So I ask him to make the long story short. If you are to rate your spiritual life on a scale of 1 to 10, his answer is 5. The next question, what will make it a 10? Pag perfect na po ako. Yun ang sagot. Perfect na po ako. Then, I quote John 3.16. Can we quote John 3.16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. He quoted John 3.16 verbatim. However, His answer is five. And He said, for Him to go to heaven, He has to be perfect. So, I asked Him, Repeat the same verse. All together now, let's repeat. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever becomes perfect should not perish but have eternal life. Eh, sabi niya, ah, ma'am, hindi po sinabing whoever becomes perfect should not perish but have eternal life. What did it say? Whosoever believes, eh, yun ang sinabi mo, di ba? 
that whoever becomes perfect. And then, a shock siya. I know the Holy Spirit is working. And he, wa- he was perspiring. The eyes were perspiring. <laughs> Mom, maniniwala lang po. Ano bang sinabi? <laughs> hindi ako sasagot niyan dahil hindi akong nagsalita. It was God speaking. Anong sinabi? Believe. Mahirap talaga pong paniwalaan niyan. Now, let me illustrate the meaning of the word believe. My two volunteers, my two volunteers on stage, Wemby and Jeanette. Okay, Wemby and Jeanette. Wemby and Jeanette are both of my friends. Whenever we go out, I tell them, oh, Wemby, let's go. Let's have coffee. Please be there at nine. He's uh, here, Jeanette. Para makita ka sa camera. Yeah. <laughs> Jeanette, when we... Let's have coffee, and then whenever say, whenever I say, let's meet at nine. Jeanette is there at twelve noon. <laughs> so, who will you believe, Wemby or Jeanette? Wemby. Why? <laughs> Why? Comes on time. She has what? Word of honor. Thank you, ladies. My word of honor, C- Wemby. Now. I did that illustration to that man. If you believe in the words of a human being like Wemby, why can't you not believe the word of God and He is God? Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng believe. Now, at this point, I want all of you to close your eyes. No one is looking. Close your eyes. For those of you whose answer is less than 10, This is the day of salvation. And Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. If this is the desire of your heart and you want to have an intimate fellowship with Jesus, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I repent of all my sins, past, present, and future sins. Thank you for paying for all my sins. I open my heart to you. Please come in. Dine in with me and fellowship with me. Thank you for the abundant life that you have promised, not only in heaven, but also on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's May 25. Put it down if you have a notebook. May 25, my spiritual birthday. And I am going to heaven. Wag naman sanang ipahintulot ng Panginoon. Pag namatay ka bukas, diretso ka sa langit. No stopover. Just like Philippine Airlines to San Francisco. Direct. No stopover. Are you following? Okay. Simula pa lang, pinapawisan na ako. Ang <laughs> Okay, the next stage of salvation, this is where we are now. Ito yung pinakang mahirap. Pero, may secret. The next stage of salvation is sanctification. Sanctification. Okay. It is not represented by a dot. It is one time. You can see that man? The man is moving. He is moving. He is walking. How do you walk? Do you walk like this? You walk forward. Okay. It's present progressive. Okay. You are being, it ends in I-N-G. You are being saved from the power of sin. And how does this happen? How does this happen? I have to give a verse. Two more minutes. Okay. Romans 12. Two, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that by testing you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Joy, I have to call you again because I see you. Can you stand up please on the mic para marinig nila? This is very important. It says here, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. How will this sanctification process happen? Joy, be transformed. Can you, there are two 
two voices of a verb. Simple English. Why did I call Joy? She's a very good writer, English writer, so she can definitely answer my questions. Can you differentiate passive and active? Hindi marinig. Maybe you can come up here. Here, here. What's the difference between passive and active? This is really short. Active voice is when the focus of the sentence is in the doer of the action. Passive voice is when uh, the action or the object of the action is the focus of the sentence. Very good. Diba? Naintindihan nyo? Okay. <laughs> Hindi naintindihan. Uulitin ko. <laughs> Active voice, the subject, di ba subject and predicate, alam nyo nun, di ba? The subject is the doer of the action. Example, our director for this event is Kat. Kat is directing the event, women to women. Kat is doing the action. Active voice. Let us make it passive. The event is being directed by Kat. So, the event is the subject. Siya ang nagre-receive ng action, being directed. Are you following? Now, malinaw na po ba? Active, passive. Why is it very important? Para po alam namin, natin, sino ba ang gagawa nun? Si God ba o ikaw? <laughs> Alright. Now, it says here, be transformed. Joy, is it in the active or passive? Passive. Very good. Because we are not the one transforming ourselves. The work of the, the sanctifying work is the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Nasagot nyo na. Malinaw. Pwede ko nang tapusin ang toko. Alright? The transformation is the work of the Holy Spirit. And what is your role? To cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Okay. I want all of you to stand up. Stand up. Yes. Now, I have taught you this prayer, but some of you, you don't know this yet. You don't have to take notes. Praise God. Ellen printed the notes for you. The fellow prayer will be distributed. The three stages of salvation will be distributed so that they, you can review. You will not forget. This is basic, basic foundation in the Christian life. Why will you master the basic? So that. When the trials come, hindi ka iiyak. You will have joy in the Lord. Okay. Repeat after me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Ang ibig sabihin po ng fill is control me. Hindi na po papasok na sa'yo na siya. Ang tawag doon, in filling, control me. Okay. E. Empower me. To overcome my sins. Enumerate your sin. Pag nahihiya ka, quietly. Pero ako hindi po ako nahihiya. Pride. Pride. Jealousy. Envy. Correcting people, that's pride. Lead me. L, lead me. To one lost soul with whom I can share the gospel today or encourage with my spiritual gift. E. Fele. Enable me to experience the full measure, not half measure, of your joy, Lord, and see your glory today. Not tomorrow, Lord. Today, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. You can take your seat. That is a prayer that the Holy Spirit has impressed in my heart. Because whenever I ask people, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Naku, nagkasala ako. It's as if it's dependent on them. No, being filled with the Holy Spirit, all you need to, to do is to ask 
by faith and believe that you are being controlled by the Holy Spirit. The next stage, malinaw po ba? It is a process. What is one time? Justification. But I hear people say, nagigilty ako. Ay, hindi ka pa ba justified? Nagigilty ka pa rin. <laughs> No more guilt for those who are in Christ Jesus. What you are feeling is conviction from the Holy Spirit. So whenever the Holy Spirit is nudging you to confess, do not say, nagigilty ako. You say, I am convicted by the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may be able to overcome this tendency to be a gossiper. Ganun lang po yan. Pare-pareho tayo pong sinner. Pero anong kaibahan natin sa mga hindi mananampalataya? Tayo po ay forgiven sinner. Not made an angel, an angel or angelic, just forgiven. And act like one. Okay? Next stage. Ay, itong pinakang gusto ko. Glorification. Home run. Tapos na ang labanan. Pero hindi pa po nangyayari. We will. Future tense. Importante po ang tamang English. We will be saved from the presence of sin. Mangyayari pa lang po yon At mangyayari po yan when Jesus comes and we will be in God's presence. That's the three stages of salvation. Hallelujah. Malinaw. However, there are four tools, four tools that God uses to make us more Christ-like. First tool, God's Word. I will ask everyone, raise your hand. Sino po dito ang nabasa na ang buong Bible? Raise your hand. Buong Bible. Okay, not everyone. For those of you who have not yet read the whole Bible, pray, fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Empower me to have that passion for your word. Give me a hunger and thirst for your word that I may see you, that I may taste you, that I may feel you by reading your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Impossible hindi sasagutin ni God yan because it is according to His perfect will. Malinaw po ba? Now, for those of you who have already read the whole Bible, you have to level up. What is leveling up? You have to learn to study on your own. Hindi po pwedeng nakikinig ka lang sa preaching ni Pastor Peter, ni Pastor Bong, sa YouTube, paulit-ulit. Nginuyana nila, nguwiyain mo pa, wala nang katas. You have to study it on your own in the context in which it was written. Understand the Word of God, the passage in the context in which it was written. For those of you who have read this, the Bible, the whole Bible, I recommend ESB, English Standard Version. Maganda po itong version na ito. So far, ito yung nakita namin ni Pastor Joey. Marami kaming versions ng Bible, pero so far, ito yung maganda. Marami kasing sumulat, maraming scholars na sumulat. So, how do, you, how do you study? You have to develop the skill of asking yourself the right questions. Who wrote it? Titignan mo lang, sino bang sumulat? Book of John, sinong sumulat? John. Hindi si Peter. Di ba? Hindi si Luke. Okay. Why was it written? Where was it written? What was written? What are the repeated words? You have to come up with questions. Okay. Example, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The Old Testament, when you read it, you have to filter it. There's what you call in the Bible, progressive revelation. Have you heard of that word? Anyone? Sinong nakarinig na? Yes. Progressive revelation. Ibig sabihin, may nire-reveal si God na hindi pa niya nire-reveal sa Old Testament. Now, inireveal niya sa New Testament. The mystery revealed. Ano yung mystery? Salvation is not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. So, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you. You have to filter it. Ano ba ang bago? May bago bang revelasyon 
sa New Testament tungkol sa plano ni God sa akin. Ano yung plano ni God sa iyo na pinag-usapan na natin? Romans 8:28 to 29. What is that? And what is that? Verse 29. For us to be Christ-like. That is the plan. That is the plan. Yung pong Jeremiah 29, 11, yung pong si King Nebuchadnezzar, di ba? Judah was conquered. The fall of Judah. And then the Jews were exiled sa Babylon. At sinabi ni God, prosper yourself there. Build houses. Marry. Yung ba ang plano ni God sa iyo? Yung po ay plano sa mga Hudyo. Hudyo ka ba? <laughs> yung po ay plan sa mga Hudyo. Na salain mo, ano ba yung plano? May bagong plano ba sa New Testament? Christ-likeness ang plano. So yung po ang sinasabi ko, you have to think. When you interpret the Old Testament, do not immediately apply it to yourself because there might be a new plan in the New Testament. Like rest. In the Old Testament, physical rest. But in the New Testament, it's not just physical rest. It's what? Spiritual rest. Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yon. Ano pa? Mayroong huwag kakain ng baboy sa Old Testament. Pero sa New Testament, it's not what comes out of your mouth. What is not what you put in your mouth pala. But it's what comes out of your mouth that makes you... Dirty. Very good. So, malinaw po ba? You have to filter it. Baka may bagong revelasyon. Kung walang bagong revelasyon, then apply it. Kasi pag mali ang interpretation, mali rin ang application. At anong nangyayari? Nagkakasala ka pa. Matulog ka na lang. Gaganda pa ang balat mo. <laughs> okay, next. Level up. And then you memorize. After studying, you memorize. Why is it important to memorize? Why? Because if Satan attacks you, you cannot say to Satan, Tika muna, satanas, hanapin ko pa yung verse. <laughs> Pag inataki ka na in the area of pride or fear, for God has not given me the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Nanginginig na si Satanas. Si Satanas, hindi, to, hindi takot. If you are busy doing ministry, he wants you to be busy doing ministry so that you will shout, so that you will not have time for God, so that you will be irritated, so that you will be critical of other people. But Satan... Nanginginig siya if you are quoting the scripture. Nanginginig siya if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot judge other people's walk. We, we are not God. It's between them and the Lord. We just have to focus on Jesus and our walk with God. Wag mong baguhin ang asawa mo. Hindi ka Diyos. Diyos ka lang ng kagandahan. Okay? <laughs> Okay. Pinapawisan na talaga ako. <laughs> Memorize. And then, after memorizing, you meditate. Anong ibig sabihin ng meditate? You consider. In Tagalog, magmuni-muni. Pagmuni-munihan mo. Now you say, Jesus, I'm listening to you. What do you want me to do with this word of yours? Your. And then, you apply. Kaya sinabi nun, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind means studying, memorizing, meditating. And then, finally, that by testing, you may prove what the will of God is. That which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Ang ibig sabihin po ng by testing is when you apply my word, you will be able to prove my perfect will for you. Example. Amen. Thank you, sister. Example. There's this lady uh, in, in my Go Viral group. Yeah, she's young. I, I disciple ladies who are younger than me. Why? Kasi kung kaedad ko po, di halos sabay-sabay kaming mamamatay. Wa, 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 wala po konti. Walang, hindi, yung, hindi magko-continue yung linya. So kailangan younger than me. At least younger than me. So ngayon, 
in the birthday celebration of my husband, they made a video, a one-hour video, and one of the couples there, the, the husband said, I am impacted by the transformation of my wife. Ever since my wife attended the D group, she changed. She become less and less temperamental. So I asked the wife, what did you do? Tita Jean, I applied. Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk with wine because that is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit when I wake up. <laughs> Nakokote na yan, verbatim, totoo ka. Nandito ba si Lizelle Vega? Si Lizito? Yes! Yes, she's the sister. Uh, my, one of my disciples is the sister, si Lizzie Nagit. And thank you, thank you for the electric fan. It is the Holy Spirit. It's so warm. Okay. <laughs> um, she said, in the morning, Tita Jean, I say, fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. And then... When I'm tempted, when I'm tempted to shout at my husband because I'm losing my temper, fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. And then in the afternoon, I'm tired already because I don't have a helper in the U.S. I shouted at my husband. I say, I confess the sin of temper. I repent of the sin. Thank you for forgiving me. 100% paid in full. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Then I go to my husband. I'm sorry, honey. And then the husband will say, I forgive you. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Siya pala yung filled. So, anong ginawa ni Lizzie? That by testing, by applying, she was able to prove what is the will of God. And what is God's will of God in that particular point in time? A harmonious marriage. A harmonious marriage. Do you want to see an illustration? My volunteer come up here. Monet, Monet, we will just illustrate. This is really quick. Time, please. How many minutes do I have? We'll go on. Yes, give me mic. Give, him, give her mic. Okay, we will illustrate. Because sometimes you say be filled, but you don't know how to do it. Correct? Ganito po yan. Okay. Monet. Ito ang setting sa so, wow, meron kayong event. And you were told by your D-group leader to bring potluck eh, pot bless, to bring food. Okay, Munet. Yes. Aloud, please, project. Yes. Okay, what I will bring, Sis Jean? Yes. I'll bring adobo. Yes. Okay. So, nasa ng adobo? But, Sis Jean, oh. sorry, I forgot to bring adobo. Instead, I bring pancet. Pansit. Yes. Fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Napakahina niyang kumuha, sinabi ko. Adobo, pansit ang dinala. Fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Sister, kakain tayo ng napakaraming pansit. Carbo loading. Tapos sasayaw tayo. Amen. Amen. Okay, naintindihan po ba? Sinto. Okay. Sis Jean, sorry, I know you said I bring adobo. Instead, I bring pansit. Ano ba naman, sister? Ilang beses ko bang sinabi sa'yo? Lima yata, in-explain ko. Si Joy, si Ann, si Janet, pinagdala ko na ng pansit. Apat na pansit. Pambi. <laughs> Pambihira talaga, oo. Konting utak lang yan eh. Then I say, I confess this sin of temper. I repent of this sin. Thank you for forgiving me. Tetelestai, 100% paid in full. Fill me with your Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Then I go to my sister. Sister, sorry, sinigawang kita. Will you forgive me? Sorry, Sis Jean. I forgive you. Thank you, sister. Okay, upo ka na. Thank you. That is the spirit-filled life. Malinaw po ba? But I notice from going around here, even in CCF, when I ask them, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Hindi kasi, ano yung nagalit ako sa asaw. Hindi yun eh. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is simply 
asking the Holy Spirit to control you. You do not focus on the result. You focus on God giving you the Holy Spirit, the power to overcome that sin. And you do it moment by moment by moment until Jesus comes or when you die, whichever comes first. Malinao? Okay. That is the other thing, being controlled by the Holy Spirit. So God's Word, study, memorize, meditate, and then apply. And then for you to do it, you have to appropriate the power of the Holy Spirit. Pride, which is one of my sins, cannot be defeated by being humble. Can you be, look at me, I will be humble, I will be humble, I will be humble, I will be... Hindi po mangyayari yan. Why? Why? Addictive behavior or bad habits cannot be defeated by the resolve to refrain from doing it. Why? Because fleshly desires or, or sins of the flesh, yan po ay kakampe ng flesh. Flesh meaning your own strength. They are on the same level. They are friends. Magkachika po sila. Sila is si Marites at Marisol. Diba? Magkachika sila. So, you cannot depend on the flesh. Dahil fleshly desires or sins, yan po ay kakampi ng flesh. So, what do you do? You have to appropriate a higher power. Okay, to illustrate, the law of gravity. Whatever comes up, must come down. You cannot defy the law of gravity by the same law. What will you use to defy the law of gravity? The one in red. The law of what? Law of aerodynamics. Suma cum laude. Ma'am, what is your name? <laughs> Chit. Siya lagi talaga nakakasagot. Suma cum laude. Reward in heaven. Okay. The law of gravity can only be defied by a higher law, which is the law of aerodynamics. Marami pong Christian kaya po defeated because they are appropriating the law of themselves. That is glory to you. Naghihirap ka pa, nai-stress ka pa. But if you appropriate the law of the Spirit, it will lessen your stress and anxiety because the result is not dependent on you. It is dependent on the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is to ask. Ulitin po natin. All you need to do is to ask. Huwag kang asumera. Paggising sa umaga, do not assume that you are controlled by the Holy Spirit. You have to ask by faith and believe that you are being controlled. That's why I do this. Fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head. Kis nilagyan ko ng, ng device. Okay, next. Malinaw na. God's people. Sino yung God's people? Yan po yung D-group. If you're not part of a D-group, you should join a D-group. You need the D-group so that you will meet other ladies who are gossipers, <laughs> proud, critical. You should join this D-group. Wala pong perfect sa D-group. But in the D-group, you will become holier and holier until Jesus comes. In our group, we have what you call accountability group. We call it 407 Yes. Listen up. Take it down. 407 Yes. Write it. If you have a notebook, write it. 407 Yes. What is four? What is four? Four times kang nag-work out. Any form of workout. It can be Pilates. It can be belly dancing. It can be brisk walking or swimming. Okay? Four times. The minimum that I ask them to do is at least 15 minutes for at least four times a week. So, how, it's only an hour. So, on a Monday, 15 minutes. On a Wednesday, 15 minutes. Eh, four times lang eh. I do not expect them to do what I do. I do at least 45 minutes to an hour for four to five times a week. Because it's already my lifestyle. Pag hindi po ako naka-workout, sumasakit talaga ulo ko. I need to have that endorphin level up. But for you, if you will start, 15 minutes. So, twice ka lang nag-workout, two ang report mo sa first item. 
407, ha? Yung zero. Okay. Pag ikaw, second item na tayo, ha? Pag ikaw ay sinigawan mo ang asawa mo, binatukan mo ang anak mo, chinismis mo ang kapitbahay mo, sinigawan mo ang kabilang table sa wow, tatlong beses yun. Ang iyong score sa second item is three. Pero pag hindi mo binatukan ang anak mo, hindi mo sinigawan ang asawa mo, hindi mo chinismis yung other table, your score is perfect score, zero. And then, seven. Seven times kang nag-spend time with God. Hindi ka ilang mahabang mahaba. Okay, you can spend time with God. The most important thing is you are hearing the Word of God, not hearing yourself through the power of the Holy Spirit. I do it only 15 minutes in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I write in my journal. And throughout the day, kinakausap ko, Holy Spirit. Sabi nga ni Johanna, ano ginagawa mo? I'm talking to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Kasi nga, para kung si Raulo nagsasalita ako lagi, nagsasampay, oh, ano gagawin natin ngayon? Ganyan, ganyan po ako. Kasi nga, artista eh. I have to really express myself. So, 407. And what is yes? Your I will statement which you will do today. Later on, makikita nyo. I will not explain it anymore. Later on, okay? That is accountability. Hindi lang chikahan. Hindi lang... Mag-aaral ng Bible, ia-apply mo, and you can check each other through the accountability report in the D-group. Next, God's affliction. Okay. Hebrews 12, 6, the Lord corrects the people He loves and disciplines those He calls His own. I have another verse, John 15, verses 1 to 2. I am the true vine. Jesus is talking here. Correct, Joy? Who is talking? Jesus. I am the true vine. And my Father, meaning God the Father, is the vine dresser. Every branch in me. Ibig sabihin, may relasyon kay Kristo. Ibig sabihin, isa kang mana ng palataya. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, hindi na mumunga. Ang fruit there is character, Good works or disciples. Every branch in me, isang mananampalataya na hindi na mumunga, He takes away. Anong ibig sabihin ng takes away? The root word in Greek is airo, hindi kaikakat. Airo, the Greek word is airo. Ang ibig sabihin po ng airo, lift up, to lift up. Okay, to lift up. Pag nakakita ko po ng trellis, sino dito nakapuntang Napa Valley or in Europe? Okay, kung wala pa, i-illustrate ko. Ito yung trellis, balag in Tagalog. Okay, low-lying branches, ililift up at isasabit sa trellis, sa balag. Bakit? Para mamunga. Paano mamunga? Iaakyat, isasabit para ano? Para ma maarawan. Very good. Maka-receive ng air kasi pag nasa lupa, pwedeng kainin ng insekto. Hindi siya makahinga. Wala siyang sun. So you have to lift it up so that it will receive sun and air. Hindi kainin ng insekto and eventually mamunga. Symbolically, in the Christian life, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. Ililift up ka ni God. Ididiscipline ka. That's another word. Bibigyan ka ng... Trial. Para mamunga ka. So what's the attitude if you have trials? Later on, sasagutin nyo yan. So mamumunga ka, kaya ka didisiplinahin. The other one is pruning. Every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes that it may bear much fruit. Ikaw, hindi ka naman nagkakasala. Hindi ka naman nagchichismis. Hindi ka naman isang marites. Okay? Hindi ka nagchichismis, pero may trials pa rin. Anong purpose? Anong purpose? So that you will bear much fruit. Character fruit, Christ-likeness, can be good works also. And then, disciples. Anong example nito sa Bible? Si Job, sinless. Wala siyang makitang kapintasan kay Job. Pero, anong nangyari? Di ba? Naghirap siya. He got sick. Naghirap siya. Pati yung asawa niya, di ba? He lost everything. But then, anong purpose? So that he will bear much fruit. Lalo, 
lalong nakita ang dependence ni Job, the character of Job in the midst of that trial. Naintindihan po ba? So, if you encounter trials, what's the right attitude? Hindi ka pupunta sa D-group leader. Ang D-group leader, hindi yan Diyos. Tao din yan. Forgiven sinner. Saan ka pupunta muna? Kay God. And then you ask God, Lord, is there any sin in my life? If there is sin, confess, repent. But if there's no sin, ask God, Lord, what character trait are you teaching in me? Is it humility? Is it patience? Is it forbearance? Is it forgiveness? Is it um, being tolerant to people? Is it loving people? Long-suffering? Pag nasagot, tsaka mo palang mag-pray, Lord, empower me to be more patient and loving through the power of your Holy Spirit. And then you go to Tita Jean, Tama Joy, your D-group leader, and says, Tita Jean, I have this trial, but I was able to overcome through this verse. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter. Sabayan mo pa ng sayaw. That's glory to God. Kaya ako po, hindi ako nahihirapang mag-disciple. Hindi ko kinakarir ang buhay ng mga disipulo ko dahil hindi ko po sila Anak, hindi ko po, hindi po nakasalalay sa kamay ko ang transformation nila. Tra- ang nakasalalay po sa kamay ni God, ang kanilang transformation. So what do I do? I just pray fervently with shameless audacity that the Lord will touch their hearts and their minds, that there will be a root structure change, a change from the heart that only the Holy Spirit can do. Ako po ay facilitator lang. Let me illustrate again. Malapit na tayo. 11.27. Oh, this is, this is a wheat plant. Wheat plant. Okay. It says externals, internals. Many of us, we tend to look at people through the externals. Ano yung externals? The group number of members ay lumalago. Ang dami young members. Oh, ministry involvement. She's involved in Glorious Hope, Welcome Host Team, Welcome Ministry, I Women to Women, at nag apply pa sa Elevate. Wow! And hindi lang yon, may training siya, GLC level, maraming seminars, at nag pa ng letter of recommendation to be accepted sa ATS, the Asian Theological Seminary, to pursue a master's degree in divinity. Many of us think, see the externals. But you see, God does not look at the externals. Hallelujah, buti na lang. Kamalditahan kong ito. <laughs> he looks at the heart. He looks at the character. And he says, this is liberating for me. Niiyak na ako. This is liberating for me. It frees me from the bondage of my performing self dahil karirista po talaga ako. Hindi pwedeng mas may matalino sa akin. Hindi pwedeng may mas maganda at magaling sa akin. Kailangan ako ang number one. But by the grace of God, I surrendered my life to God and I was freed from the bondage of my performing self. I do not have to perform anymore. I am already a princess, a child of God. Clear po ba? Okay. Look at this. A toothpaste. Toothpaste. Ang loob niya, ang pakete niya blue. So isipin mo, ang lalabas blue. Pero anong lumabas? Itim. A man's true character is revealed under much strain. Under so many stress and trials. Yan po yan. This is the last slide. Be ready with the video. Last slide, symptoms of shallow restedness, a uh, rootedness, I mean. Carnality, you are overly sensitive. Ako rin po sensitive only pag nanggaling ang comment sa pamilya ko. But with other people, it does not affect me so much. Why? Because I have so uh, closely knit, closely related yeah, to my family. Okay. Now, you're easily discouraged. You're offended. You're, you easily stumble. Kinuha lang yung nireserve mong table, galit ka na. Bakit ang salvation mo ba ay nakasalalay sa isang table na yan? 
kapag yung bang table na yan ay hindi mo na upuan, hindi ka na maganda. Sagutin mo. Maganda pa rin. Hindi ka na ba sexy? Sexy pa rin. Anong problema? Eh di upo ako dun sa likod. Maganda pa rin ako. Okay. You're disappointed with God. Nagtatampo ako kay God. I surrender my life. Tapos kinuha niya ang kapatid ko na matay sa cancer. Unbelief. You do not believe the word of God. Sinabi na nga eh, isang kong prinsesa, eh ganito ka pa rin kung lumakad. Meron bang prinsesa ang ganun? Nahihiya ka. You lack knowledge of God's word. You've been a Christian for two years and all you know is John 3.16. Okay. You draw strength. Okay, the indications of deep rootedness. You draw strength from the Word of God during trials. The Holy Spirit is reminding you of verses in the Word of God that you memorize. Eh, kung wala kang minememorize, anong i-remind? Wala. Nga nga, tama. <laughs> Walang mari-remind because you don't know anything. All right. What else? You depend on God. This is an indication of deep-rootedness. Anong sign pag ikaw ay nangangarir sa ministry, burn out ka? You are easily irritated. You expect people to act like you. Ano ba naman yan? Sinabi ko nang maaga ang dating, 10 o'clock pa rin siya dumadating. Eh bakit mo kasi inassign? Alam mo namang lagi ang late. Huwag kang mag-assign ng ganyan. <laughs> it's not our problem, it's yours. <laughs> Okay, you hold on to God's promises for each challenge. Example, example, you want this uh, guy to be married to your daughter. You don't claim that guy, you claim the promise. Because you said in your word, in Luke 11, 9 to 10, Ask, it shall be given, seek, and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened. Anyone who asks receives, and one who seeks finds, and anyone who knocks, the door will be opened. I claim this, O oh Lord, in Zechariah 4, 6 to 7. Oh, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Oh, what a mighty mountain before Serubabel, palitan mo, before Joy Longkop, before Anne, before Jessica, you shall be level ground. Yan po ang claiming the promises of God. Hindi ito, Sama, ay, God, sana po. Anong sana? Anak ka ng Diyos, don't say sana. You pray with shameless audacity. You claim the promises of God. And if you do it, He will prove Himself faithful. Play the video, please. Play the video. The single most uh, validating reality in life for your faith is not some idea in your head, it's trials. It's what can your faith survive? You know, people who say, well, I believe in the Lord, and something goes wrong in their life, and they walk out. Well, that's not a saving faith. That's not a faith that's a gift from God, because that lasts. So you take Job as an illustration. Mm. Devastation. I mean, just devastation every way you could cut it. And he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So when you go through a trial, maybe your mom is, is, gets cancer or maybe your dad dies or maybe some horrible thing happens or maybe you're invested in a relationship and, you know, the, the person you're interested in walks away from you or whatever the issue is, maybe you get an illness. Does your faith stay intact through that trial? That's what Peter's talking about when he says it's those kinds of trials that validate your faith. And so I have to say this in all honesty, if you're 15 years old, you might question your faith more than you do than you would if you were my age, because I've, I've been through that. I've been through a wife that broke her neck and broke C3 and C2 and should have died. I've been through a, you know my son having a brain tumor. I've been through illnesses where I almost died, blood clots in my lungs and and my faith comes through and just gets stronger all the time. So I say, this isn't my faith. Mm. This, is, this is a faith that stands the test. This is, I mean, the devil said, Job, Job just trusts you, God, because you, you bless him. So God says, okay, take it all away. Take it all away. And we'll test his faith. And it was all taken away, mm. all of it. And he said, even if you slay me, I'll trust you. 
That's, that is a gift of God. That's a faith that comes from above. So as you grow as a Christian, as you have more experiences that challenge your faith, if you come out the other side, trusting the Lord, still loving him, still humble, still desiring to be obedient, those are the acid tests. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stand up, all of you, please. Stand up. The ultimate purpose of God for your life is to restore that Christ-like image in you for us to be Christ-like. And we can only do it through the power of the Holy Spirit with a kembot on the side. Play the music, please. <laughs> That was so <laughs> isn't energizing. It, isn't it great, did, ladies? Yeah, did you have fun? <laughs> we needed that. We all needed that. Yeah, know? but we really love this, uh, this Jean for 
You know, every time she talks here, she does that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first time I, I We love actually, you, Sis Jean. Yeah, I actually heard her, I mean, heard her talk before. After her talk, she let us dance also. I was there oh, <laughs> yeah. that time. Really? But yeah, you so. remember that, sis? Yeah, thank you, Sis Jean. That was so Thank you so wonderful. much. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, guys, ladies, sorry, not guys. <laughs> ladies. <laughs> wow, ladies. Um... Did you learn a lot from Sis Jean? Yeah. So now, do you know what your purpose is? Alam nyo na. <laughs> Pwede ba nating tanongin? Just one. Can we ask one of you to just share very quick lang? Kasi we don't have ano, much, na, time. Ta much time. Just one Wemby. person. <laughs> Can you ask them? Mahilig Can talaga magsabi nila. Ay, next time, di na ako. Ano? <laughs> Sige, from your table. Wemby. Can we ask you here, please? Oh, Wemby. Hello po, I learned that um, by the time that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, after that, we have ano, continuous, um, continuous sanctification until the day we die and really, really saved away from sin. Yes, amen. Thank you, Sis Wemby, for sharing that. Thank so you, my Wemby. own takeaway, Sis Jessica, actually, okay. um, I could really relate to what uh, Sis Jean man, um, shared about uh, you know, her marriage, like mm -hmm. what type of husband she would wear. But in my case, um, in my case, the, the, my, my ultimate takeaway actually mm, okay. is the most recent one when I changed my job. Mm -hmm. So I was praying, okay, I wanted, I want a job that's daytime, day shift. I want a job that's work from home. I want a job wherein, you know, I could, uh, I could worship God and I could serve the Lord here in, in, CC, in WOW. But you know what? <laughs> Actually, what happened was I got a job that's graveyard, graveyard shift. Mm -mm. So, 9 to 6. Hanggang ngayon, wala pa akong tulog, sis. Oh, no. <laughs> and then, on-site siya. It's not work from home. But you know what? I prayed for this job. Pero sabi ko, Lord, bakit nandito ako? And you know what I realized? I was brought there for a reason. And I have a purpose in that place. Wow. Because you know what? Wow. I was able to host a Bible study within my team. Praise God. So, <laughs> Praise God. And that really, um, you know, I, I think that's one of my purposes there in that in that company, I shared the gospel to my teammates, and we are already oh, wow. able to do Bible studies every Monday. Amazing. So, <laughs> so I think that's really my purpose. Praise for, God. Yeah. Sis Hazel. How about you, Sis Jessica? Yeah, what resonated to me most is the importance of being Christ like. Do you believe that, ladies? Because this can only be done through an intimacy with Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit to be Spirit-filled moment by moment. Amen. Yes. You know, because Jessica. apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Right, ladies? I agree. And so, before we allow you to discuss among yourselves at your tables, we have a few announcements to make for you. Yeah, I'm sure excited na sila to discuss. Yes. But before that, I would like to uh, let you know that there's no GLC classes for today. Oh, yes. No, for today, we don't have GLC, both GLC 1 and 2. And then um, we will resume next week, Thursday, June 1st. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, and next, ladies, are you excited to have a new series next week? We are having and starting a new series called Hey Bro, How Do You Thrive in Trials? I think Let's watch this video. I think Hey Bro Joe. Yeah, Hey Bro Joe. Hey Bro Joe, during suffering, how can I truly believe that God is sovereign? Hey Bro Joe, how can I forgive others when I don't want to? Hey Bro Joe, at times I feel very alone. How can I know and experience God's intimate presence? Hey, brother Joe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you excited? more excited? Is this another one? Oh, okay. There's another one. I 
think that's it, Sis yeah. Jessica. So, <laughs> are you excited? Are you excited, excited, ako, excited na ako, excited yeah. already. Wow. For the next series. I'm yes. sure it's really gonna be a very um, enlightening, very, yeah. you know, because uh, you know, motivating, encouraging mm, yeah. series. Because we're bringing in a Bible character. That's Joseph. You all know Joseph, right? He's bro Joe, actually. <laughs> and uh, it's really interesting to know uh, what Pastor Peter shared to us last Sunday about living in God's presence, right? Yes. And you know, we are diving into the 12 principles, actually, that helped Brother Joe or Joseph to thrive in trials, okay, wherever he was, whether in the pit or at the palace. Are you that excited too? Yes, Already? I am, sis. But anyway, so before we go dive deeper into the message, to, and before I discuss the, I mean, before we discuss the questions, so I would like to just uh, remind the volunteers for the um, recording of Bro Joe. So we have another recording of the videos at 1 p.m. So all volunteers, please proceed to the uh, back, like the registration table. Uh, so all of you can go together later, okay? So first, our first question, what is your level of spirituality? I think this was asked earlier already by Sis Jean. So are you shallow rooted or deeply mm -hmm. rooted? Okay. okay, then second question is, what are the signs or indications that you are shallow rooted or deeply rooted? Okay, and lastly, which one among the four tools that God uses to make you Christ-like do you need to work on the most? Okay, so ladies, have a blessed discussion. Um, see you next week. Yeah, see you and next God week. Bless. God bless everyone.